chambered tombs of the early Neolithic in Britain dated from around 3800 to 3500 BCE. And in Britain, these tombs are categorized by location. And so we have the Cotswold Seven Group, the Clyde Cairns Group of Scotland, the Court Cairns Group of Ireland, and the Stall Cairns, sometimes known as the Orkney Cromatory of Northern Scotland. The Cotswold Seven Group are a series of approximately 200 long barrels concentrated mainly within the Cotswolds, but they also extended into the Gower region of South West Wales, down to Avebury in the southwest of England, and with some examples reaching up to North Wales. The long barrow tradition originated in the area we now known as modern day Spain, Portugal and parts of western France and they are some of the oldest known constructions dating back to the mid 5th millennium BCE. Long barrows consist of a long, usually earthen tombless, which has been raised over a central burial chamber constructed of either timber or stone. They were thought to be used as community or family burial sites with the remains of many individuals often found within. Generally, they were orientated east to west and were widest at the eastern end. And at the eastern end, they may have been fronted by a large group of posts. And it was in and around these posts where the ancient rituals took place. Like long barrows, chamber kins consist of a burial chamber, usually of stone, over which a cairn of stones was constructed. They were often found close to Neolithic settlements and are thought to be community-based burial sites, usually containing a large number of interments. The Clyde Cairns in Scotland are very similar to the Court Cairns found in Ireland. The burial chamber is normally located at one end of the cairn, with a roofless semicircular forecourt at the entrance, and it is this forecourt that gives it its alternate name of Court Cairn, the name by which they are known in Ireland. Another type of caned tomb was that of the stalled cairns of northern Scotland, and they are also referred to as the Orkney Chromatory. The chamber of these tombs is divided into compartments by slabs of stone. The number of these compartments can range from 4 to over 24. The actual shape of the cane varies. They may be large, long canes, simple, circular designs, or they could be elaborate constructions with four courts protruding from each end. Dolmens, on the other hand, are another early Neolithic structure, and they date from 4,000 3000 BC and these structures have at least two but usually more vertical stone megaliths that support a very large horizontal capstone. They are often and are probably more appropriately called portal tombs as they have 
two large portal stones making the entrance and a large capstone across the top. Capstone then is further supported by one or more uprights which form an entrance portal over the burial chamber. The first of these dolmens tended to be small and were thought to have been used for single burials only, though later examples show evidence of multiple burials. It is generally accepted that the main purpose of these dolmens were, well, to be used as tombs, and some were very clearly used for burial. There is, however, some that would debate as to whether this was truly their primary purpose. Questions arise as to why there were such large gaps between the supporting stones. This construction would not be best suited for the creation of a closed chamber. And again, the capstones were very large, much bigger than is needed for a burial chamber, in some cases up to 110 tons. To answer this, it has been suggested that the supporting uprights may have been infilled with other materials before being encased within their mounds. But then, if they were all covered with earthen mounds or rocky cairns, then where have they gone? Why then have they all lost their mounds? Especially while many other less impressive monuments of the same time still have theirs. Archaeologists have also found such artefacts as pottery, animal bones and hearths which would suggest that dolmens were used for other activities, possibly ritualistic work along with the commemoration and veneration of the spiritual ancestors. And some excavations show that the dead had not been immediately buried but had been left to decompose before the bare bones were taken for burial into the tomb. So, many questions are still left here to answer in regards to these ancient monuments. Perhaps, as been already hinted at before, these monuments had more than just one single purpose. The worship of the Earth Goddess dates back to the Paleolithic, with many Venus figurines having been found. The Venus of the whole fells dates back at least 35,000 years. It's not really surprising that the ancients who believe in the Earth Goddess would see them burying their dead and conducting rites and rituals to help their ancestors pass safely on to the underworld. I also think it pretty safe ground to speculate that these same burial monuments would be venerated in a religious context. The Earth Goddess has had many names through the ages. The Greeks called her Gaia, the Celts Tanu or Anu. I know her as Don. She is the one we must all return to at some point in time. Some, of course, before others. A new lot will be long before me. You see, I've had a word and I am last in line. The harbinger of doom. Or 
the Good Shepherd, if you like. And with that thought, I bid you farewell. And hope you enjoy the rest of this glorious day.